Hi there. In this video, we are going to have some fun with DALL-E. Uh, first, we are going to do some image replication in which we're going to give DALL-E an image and get a description. Sorry, we're going to give uh, GPT-4 Vision an image, get a description and get DALL-E to be creative with it. In second one, we're going to have a loop where we uh, get an image and then with user in mind, get user input and try to get that image as close to what we are looking for as possible. Here, I'll show you an image. I started this with a cute robot, and then slowly I made it a painter, and I put a canvas there, made the robot retro looking, kind of like uh, steampunk style. So, and towards the end, towards the end, we're gonna review this cookbook by OpenAI by Will DePew on all the different features and parameters that Dali displays. Uh, so this is quite a lot of fun. We're gonna take a look at this. I will also provide basic call parameters so you can make a call to Dali. Use Pillow to save your images. You can return the Dali can return image data. It doesn't have to be URL, but we're gonna talk about all of that. Code files for this will be available at Patreon. Link is in the description. It will be available at nine dollar tier. Let's start with the first file, which does uh, somewhat of an image replication. Of course, uh, you don't want to do this with copyrighted work, but this is an image I generated uh, by DALL-E 3. It's a painter robot. And in this uh, file, we are importing OpenAI, of course. We are importing Base64. We don't need requests unless we are receiving image URL from uh, DALL-E. Base64 is going to be able to allow us to convert our images to uh, Base64 uh, data string and also to convert the um, uh, base64 json object we received from dali and write it to a image uh, this was the original image this is the original image and this is uh, what dali was able to produce from the description which the gpt4 vision was able to generate we have a function which takes in an image path and just turns it into base64 and returns it here is our image path we are referring to this image right here then we call that function and get the base64 description of it we set our API key, instantiating our client with the OpenAI object, which we have imported from OpenAI. Then we call client.chat.completionsCreate uh, with streaming through. We are calling the GPT-4 vision. Our text description is, describe this image as a prompt for a text-to-image model. And uh, as you see, this time our messages is a list consisting of an object, which the first one has a role, which is user, and it has a content, which is a list. And we have two objects in there, one of them which is text, which is our instruction, which is this one right here. And the second one is of type image URL. It has to be image URL, even though you are inserting base64 image. And this is how you pass it on. We just set the max tokens to 300 and get streaming responses. And we print them to terminal as well. And then once we have this description, we make a call to DALI in standard quality, get only one response. When we receive it, we get the base64 data from it. Uh, from that JSON, E64 JSON object that is returned. We also print the keys. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that DALL-E 3 at all times will rewrite the prompt. There is no way to stop it currently. We will also print the revised prompt and now we are just going to save the image. So like I said, let's run this first. And this is going to be, this is our image, a painter robot. Let's see how it describes it and let's see what DALL-E returns to us. Here we go, we're getting a description, a futuristic robot with a television screen for a head displaying a smiling face and pixel art style. So this is quite a detailed description of this image, which we had just looked at. And uh, Dali is also going to rewrite that prompt. Uh, we are just waiting for a response. Here we go. See, we did print the uh, keys, the JSON object, which B64 JSON object, which we specify in the response format, includes a B64 JSON, a revised prompt in URL, uh, we have used the B64JSON to save the image. Let's take a look. This is the generated image. It looks pretty good, actually. Let's take a look. Let's compare it to our original. Here we go. This was our original. This is our regenerated image. It's, uh, it's very similar, in, in a sense. Uh, here is our revised prompt. As we said, this prompt that we sent, it had to be revised. And you can read the revised prompt right here. Now let's move on to the more fun example with the human in the loop. So the second uh, file actually uh, takes in a simple user input, then generates an image with DALI, displays it to us, and then takes in additional instructions from the user, gets GPT-4 vision uh, to rewrite a description and a new description for the image based on the image that we just generated. And we keep repeating this process, trying to fine tune the image exactly to our needs. Let's start this process. I will generate an image of a cute robot 
and uh, after we have played around with it i will uh, review the code as well and like i said the code files are available at patreon link will be in the description So I added the instructions that robot is a square head and painting. So uh, DALI, uh, sorry, the GPT-4 vision is creating an original description and then modified description. Uh, so let's see how this works. So the, uh, I had to kind of be specific in my uh, instructions to vision because it was actually fighting with my instructions here and there, thinking that these user instructions were actually describing the original image. But here we go. So this is very much so similar to our original image. Let's compare. See if we compare them side by side, they, uh, they are remarkably similar. So let's add new instruction. I just ask that canvas is visible in the image. So we're getting an original description and modified description. It does mention that it's anthropomorphic robots, charming cartoonish design standing in front of a visible canvas. Let's see. So this is our new image. Good. Now we have a canvas. That's nice. Let's compare. So this is our two images now. This is looking good. Let's continue. So I added quite a lot of instructions. I said robot is retro, but the scene is futuristic. Robot is painting an abstract apple. Let's see if we are able to generate that. Again, we get the original description and a modified description. Of course, when we sent this, we are sending this entire thing to Dali, but Dali is actually rewriting our prompt. So this is good that we are actually keeping the original description because Dali is going to reinterpret that anyway. So here we go. Look, we actually, this is very good. We got a retro robot that is painting uh, something like an apple. It's abstract, right? Scene is not so much futuristic, but this is good. I'm just going to add background is a nebula. Let's see what happens. And this was the difference from our image number two to image number three. So our modified description now includes the image that depicts a vintage style. Okay, this is nice. And still, we have the apple nebula in the background. I'm going to say robot is smiling. And let's compare now the comparison in this iteration. So I believe this works very well. Uh, it keeps the overall uh, concept in mind and keeps adding what we are needing. I think this does a much better job than uh, generating the chat GPT interface. And now it says the robot is smiling. Let's see our new image. Okay, this is nice. Now I'm going to add robot has intricate details. And this was our two images. We ask for a robot to be smiling, and it is kind of smiling. Still the nebula, still we have the apple. The cool part is the new description added our, uh, you know, additional details. But, okay, here we go. Uh, ornamented. I believe that's what the modified description has said. I'm now going to ask robot has an oversized head in comparison to its body. And uh, if you look at the previous description, we can see that this original description really helps to center the overall composition and then the new description actually adds to it. This was the difference from a previous description. We did ask for robot body to be detailed. Okay, it didn't follow this one very closely, but we still have the nebula, the apple, and then the slightly smiling robot. Let's go one step further. I meant to type robot's body has fractal designs on it. Let's see, it'll, it'll hit our mark with that. I believe part of the problem is the now our description is getting really large and we are hitting the 300 uh, max token limit. I think that's why this is interesting for sure. Uh, that, that means we probably need to increase the 300. Maybe we can make it 500. But I'm not going to run it again. Let's just take a look at the code. So we do our imports. We import base64 and pillow. The requirements for this is OpenAI and pillow libraries. And these are the versions that I'm using. Uh, pillow is to display the image and save the image, and bytes is to handle the by base64 image. We we are the, we are doing this in object-oriented style. Here we are initializing our class with the API key and the client, and we set the image counter to zero so we can save the images uh, as they are arrived with appropriate naming. We do have a method called get description, which is going to take in the image and the instruction. We do use streaming true so we can stream it, stream the results of the GPT-4 vision to terminal. And this is our instruction. Your task is two parts. One to describe this image in detail, then create a new description, modifying the original with the items which the user has mentioned. I did need to say this. User is not describing the current image, but wishes you to add the new elements into the new description. And here I insert the description. Otherwise, sometimes, and it still does that, it thinks that we are describing the image and it says something like, well, the image doesn't have that. Like, you know, when we say, make the robot uh, robot has a square head it says well the robot doesn't have a square head right so that's why i had to be very explicit and 
clear in my instructions and we do send the image as we have talked in from the previous files we just increase the tokens to 500 hopefully that should help in future runs we get streaming responses we have another method which call makes a call to dali it's standard quality but we are getting response format of b64 json so we don't need to deal with urls and use requests we are receiving the image data directly we are returning the b64 json data from the response that data's first element and we have the save image which uh, grabs the b64 data and uh, assigns it to this variable if this images folder doesn't exist we create it right here and then we, we open the we want to write the image and we use the image from pillow and we show the image and we write the image and we increase the image counter and this is our run method we set a quit flag because you see we have two uh, loops running uh, inside of one another uh, we do set a quit flag flag because uh, we first get a user instruction and after that we continue to get user instruction to improve the image so if the user quits here we want to quit in both uh, loops that's why we set a quit quit flag equals to false and we check for that we make an infinite loop but we are checking for the quit flag we first get a, a user instruction generally to generate the first image and then we generate the image with, with, with those instructions and save it save the image after that we get new instructions unless the user quits and then we get a new description with that new description we generate a new image we save it and that's about it okay so this is pretty cool and uh, i do want to quickly mention uh, the file the general call to dali 3 will also be included these are the parameters Quality can be standard or HD, style can be natural or vivid, response format can be B64JSON or image URL, and these are the number of images you receive, and here I include the code to save the B64 uh, data into an image as well. Next, let's go over this OpenAI cookbook and see what DALI 3 can and cannot do. So we, there's new parameters included, which is, of course, the model which we are using now, right? DALI 3. Style can be natural or vivid. I have reflected these in the code as well. Okay, style can be natural or vivid. Quality can be standard or HD. And there's three different resolutions you can call the API with. We're going to take a look at those. It says that uh, vivid causes the model to lean towards generating hyper real or dramatic images. Natural causes the model to produce more natural, less hyper looking images. Defaults to vivid. Quality is a standard or HD. Now, this is not uh, related to resolution. Uh, HD images with finer details. So we can actually see an example. See, this is standard. This is HD. So it has nothing to do with resolution, but the detail that is depicted in the image. This is standard. This is HD. So uh, DALI 3 always rewrites the prompt and it says that keep in mind this feature isn't able to be disabled at the moment. Okay, so for example, if you ask for a bird scaring a uh, scarecrow, then the DALI will rewrite it like this. Uh, paying for a quarter size pizza with a pizza size quarter uh, will get rewritten like this. So your uh, prompts will always get rewritten. So this is the difference between standard versus HD. Here is another uh, difference for a prompt that says an infinite uniform grid of tessellated cubes this is hd quality this is standard quality right here uh, as you can see the hd quality has more detail in it sizes can be 1024 by 1024 1792 by 1024 for landscape and otherwise versa for portrait here is the difference between uh standard quality so standard quality and hd quality again like i said pay attention the pixel size of the image doesn't change uh, but supposedly the HD quality is supposed to contain more details. Here is again standard quality versus HD quality. These are all both done with the natural look. This is again standard quality versus HD quality, natural look. Now here is the vivid style. This is standard quality, HD quality, vivid look. This is both, these both are vivid, uh, but one of them is HD, one of them is standard. This one, this one here is HD, this one here is standard. Here is uh, the depiction of natural and vivid looks. So the one images on the left are natural and the images on the right are vivid. Next, he talks about uh, how we can generate icons. Uh, as you can see, DALI can generate icons very well. But if you wanted to use this in a website or something, we do need SVG images. He says that he used uh, this portrait to convert the images to SVG. Here is the link for it. Well, I'll put the link to the cookbook and you can actually read it and find all the details. 
says that Log DALI 3 is great at jumpstarting the logo creation process for your company or product. Here is a minimalistic logo for Arabian Coffee Company. Here is a minimalistic logo for publishing company in the form of a Greek statue. Uh, you can actually upload an existing logo to GPT-4 Vision, get a description and generate variations with DALI, custom tattoos, die cut stickers and t-shirts, uh, Minecraft skins. So all in all, it's pretty cool. Here's a quick showcase. Uh, I'll just zoom in if you like, take a look. So this is a lot of fun, uh, but the I guess the most important part is that, remember uh, the size, sizes. It can be landscape 1792 by 1024 square form and portrait form quality can be standard or hd style can be natural or vivid response format can be a64 which you can immediately save using a library like pillow or image url in which case you would have to retrieve using the request library i have talked about that in my previous video about uh, vision, gpt4 vision and dali and here is the code to actually save it to file uh, from a base 64 image. I hope you enjoyed this and found it useful. Let me know what you think. Uh, like I said, the code files will be available at Patreon. If you're interested in learning more and find out more of my videos, just go to my website, echohive.live. Link will be in the description and you can just simply browse, search for the content that you're looking for. And also if you're a patron, find the code download links to over uh, 160 projects. Although this, uh, I have over 200 plus uh, free coding videos, which you can enjoy. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.